Good morning again. I'm Dr. Bill Wyatt, and uh, I'm a general dentist, but I've limited my practice to orthodontics back in 1970, and had done orthodontics really gradually from 1956. So I've had a long, lot of experience in it, and I'm going to pass on some of the things that I learned and uh, some of the innovations that I have helped and have also done since then. Uh, and this is about surgery, that uh, we don't do any surgery on these. This is just a non-surgical uh, treatment of these class threes. I've done a lot of surgical orthodontics too, but uh, prefer to do the non surgical surgical type uh, this case right here is about on the edge of how far you can go non-surgically uh, doing this I guess you could do it more you, your results won't be quite like you'd like uh, this young man has a pretty pretty bad class 3 and he's got a excess vertical height of the facial structure and probably had some type of mouth uh, breathing problem in addition so but anyway he's grown quite a bit of extra vertical uh, of the lower third of the face as we'll show you and it's a pretty uh, pretty bad class 3 if you get much worse than this uh, it's hard to do it non-surgical uh, you can see the uh, molar, six-year molar right here. Looks like it's almost completely under the bicuspids uh, in this area. And over here, this is your cuspid, and that's your two bis, and there's the six-year molar. So it's it's a pretty pretty tough class two uh, case. I mean, class three. Excuse me. And uh, these lower end tiers are just completely out in front. And I felt like it, if he wanted to get a real good result of this, he ought to uh, do the surgery. But surgery is quite expensive, and he wasn't interested in the surgery at all. He just said, if, if you can't do anything with it, we just won't do anything. So I said, well, I can sure make it better. Uh, but he really wasn't too enthusiastic about getting into it, but uh, we decided to go ahead and do it, though I couldn't promise him a real beautiful result of it uh, that way. So looking at it from the side now, you can see this is a really class 3 that's more. It's completely under the bicuspids. And uh, it, it's really out front more. So anyway, we're we're going to try it with the uh, removing the six-year molars. He's got wisdom teeth back here, and they're good. And so we'll just move this molar up to about something like this, you see. And uh, we're going to have to bring all this back quite a ways up. So as we pull this, uh, in other words, we'll pull these teeth back here and we'll use class 2s or class 3 elastics in here till we get this thing back to the point where we'll have a class 1 relationship on both sides. We'll jump the cross by, of course, and get it out, out front. And in some of this, we're going to try to move this forward as much as we can we'll change the torque on the uh, upper front anteriors and also we'll change the torque on these lower and so as you back them up you're going to have to move the roots see the roots are going down here you're going to need to move the root structure further than you move the crown and that gives you some more resistance in here of pulling this back and you'll pull this forward more so you 
uh, in doing this type of orthodontics, you not only move the mandibular teeth, but you move the maxilla with the teeth in it. And frequently this is what's needed in class 3 correction is to bring the maxillary teeth out. Now as I change the torque on these anterior teeth and the tip of these, um, it will tend to move these teeth in a forward direction. And also as we tip these teeth back, it will tend to move them forward also. And we don't want any more of that. So we're going to have to wear a lot of class 3 elastics in here. And that is going to bring the maxilla further forward than you normally would. So uh, it's the mechanics of it look simple, but it's really not that simple. In other words, your tipping of these teeth to bring them back like this, you got to bring this root back. So it's going to make it harder to bring this this crown back because the whole blooming thing has got to move back like that. And uh, people don't realize that. And these are up here, but they need to be like that. Now that tipping is going to help the upper, but this tipping makes the lower even more difficult, which you've got to pull with class 3 elastics. And that's going to bring the maxillary teeth a lot further forward so when you just first somebody tells you about this you think it's totally corrected from the mandible but it's not a lot of the correction is in the maxilla and that's where you need it in many cases so most of these removal of the class three class six you i mean the six year molars involves both jaws it's not a single jaw operation and so a lot of people don't think about this when they're thinking about correcting it now surgeons they look at a class three a lot of times they don't want to work on the maxillary they just do it all by shortening the mandible and these are the ones that relapse now, I know some real good surgeons, uh, well, one that I've worked with, and I don't think he'd mind, he's in Dallas, he's a top-notch surgeon, but he nearly operates on both jaws whenever he does it, because he realizes the maxilla has got to be corrected a lot in doing this. Okay, let's go on to the other side of the mouth, and it's not that far off. Uh, yet it's, uh, well, it's pretty far. It's not that good. Uh, but uh, it's not as bad as the other other side of the mouth. Now we've got a few other just orthodontic problems. We need to expand both arches, I mean both sides of the upper. Uh, get it out over the mandible and we got a pretty long way here, so let me, I'm going to kind of speed up a little bit and try to cover it as quick as I can. Now, both six-year motors are healthy teeth. I'm not saying that, but we're going to extract those teeth. He's got second motors that look like probably have some uh, decay forming in there, and then wisdom teeth behind those. If you do not have the wisdom teeth, you cannot do this, see, so uh, not like this, anyway. Okay, the lower arch, all this section in here is going to have to be brought back, you see. And these teeth are more straight up and down, and you're going to need to move the roots back like this. And that's going to make it more difficult to move the anterior teeth back. Because they're going to have to go back here. And then the roots are going to have to be back here. And that means you're going to have to pull on the maxillary teeth further. So you're going to move the upper jaw forward in a case like this. Now he didn't incorporate 
real good and wasn't too interested in correcting it. But if he'd have done real good, we could have made it look a lot better. But I don't think it wore the elastics that much. Okay, here he is right here. Now, really, I would like to bring this part out some. And certainly, this part in. And we leave the pedonia where it is and bring this and bring these lips out, something like that, you see. Uh, but it'll come back in and the begonia will be like that. Now, well, let's see. I should have uh, erased that. All right. Now, here from the front, I mean, he looks class three anyway. You look at him, and he is. He's a pretty, a pretty bad situation, class three. But he had no interest in the surgery. In other words, a boy can get away with a class three much better than a young lady can, or a young man. Now he's uh, probably in his twenties. I don't remember just exactly. But uh, a lot of young men will grow forward, and the men will grow forward. Even after they get 20 years old, I've had some of them uh, do that. So let's go ahead and look at it again. Now when he smiles, he's got a pretty nice smile here. We'll need to fill that out, and I hope it brings this part of the facial structure forward too. Well, we didn't get it looking like I would have really liked for it to, but here it is, that's 1991, and so let's go speed through this a little bit, and let's remove those, so now again, when you take these teeth out, have the braces on the teeth so that you can start moving them the day you remove this. Just, uh, in other words, you have him go to the guy who's taking them out and put some cotton <laughs> gauze on there or stop the bleeding and get back to you and you start the movement of the teeth that day. It is much better as you get it back pretty fast. The uh, buckle and lingual sides, cortical bone, don't have time to cave in like that on the side. That makes it a little harder to close the space. However you can close any space, it doesn't matter how bad it is or if you want to work on it. I'm done. All right, here we go. Now we put a expanding upper round arch in apparently and probably this this loop may have been way on out here and we push it back and so it's pushing on these teeth a little bit and we'll broaden it out some. Now here we're going to be tugging on this after we get these things lined up. We're going to be bringing these teeth back and this will come forward a little bit but you can't depend on most of it. You're going to have to be brought back with a class 3 elastic right up there. Okay. Now, to jump the cross bite, I put some of this triad acrylic on there. Just raise those teeth up. So during the, the first part of this, he'd be chewing on these teeth right here, which is not good. You don't want to increase this any more than you have to. And do as quick as you can or you don't want these teeth erupting together uh, any more than you can get it because that's increasing the vertical and he's got too much vertical dimension in this part of the face to start with okay so we jump the bite over with that and here's the upper going out we'll bring these teeth into this arch wire and that will torque them out. They need to be torqued further forward. Need a lot of positive torque on them to bring them out and then you widen this out to some extent. 
to there. Okay, there's that acrylic. You really uh, like to get this as thin as you possibly can, and you have to extend it back uh, since these teeth are out in front of the low, the upper teeth. So you have to kind of extend this back, though it may be shallow underneath there, just so he can bite to on that until you get these teeth underneath and these teeth over, the upper teeth over, the lower teeth uh, back lingual. And then we'll be closing this up, but you're going to have to keep the roots going with the crowns and watch these roots now. You're going to have to put some tip in this right here so that this will be angled like that. So you bring these roots of these teeth back with the teeth. So you got to learn a little bit about tipping and a little bit about bending some blooming arch wire. Now, you, a lot of people think, well, they're just going to jump into orthodontics and they won't have to learn all this wire bending. Well, that is a big mistake. You just do not do a good job unless you learn the wire bending and how to handle those teeth. You can do, do darn near anything you want to with them if you learn how to bend the wire. Now this is tip in these teeth. You see we went up like that went down and went back and I think this is straight on across but that will make the root of this lateral go back in that direction and apparently this one see looks pretty good but this one looks like it's going that way so we want that root to come over there so we come right along here go up and down up again and come across that way to bring that root back all right it's some time has lapsed now it's 11 of uh, 92 and we're coming forward with this we've got a kind of a down bend in the molar here so that when we get up here the molars or the roots are going to be lined up good hopefully the bicuspids and everything okay we're coming forward we're trying to this wire goes back this way it raises it up so as we pull forward it tends to bring these roots forward so we can have these roots all parallel when we get through with the treatment all right it's coming on pretty good the, the teeth are coming now this tooth looks almost level this one looks like it's leaning a little bit so the roots need to be brought further forward so put a little more of that uh, downward bend in this wire right here see so that when we end up here both these teeth are going to be straight up and down now most of this we're going to try to carry this back to the lower teeth the lower teeth didn't have to move very far to be in class one. So the upper anterior, all of this had to go back more, you see, to do that. So we had to wear class three elastics off of there, pulling the maxillary teeth forward at the same time, doing that. Okay. Now he's looking a little better, but he's still got way too much vertical height to the face, you see. This would only be somewhere along in there. And if you close the vertical, you see it swings around. It's kind of like a gate coming across here. As you close it, it, it moves forward, you see. So if you close it from here to here, it may move almost something like that. Now it'll bring this end down here, but if we tip these teeth, it'll fill the lip out and leave a little curvature in there. And I don't think we ever got really what I wanted to on this case. But it's got a little reduction in it, 
look a little better and we've got a bad picture there but this was a good many years ago now we have the lower anterior teeth underneath the upper and uh, he's beginning to get tired of messing with this and he wants to get out of it and I'm sure he uh, just almost said you've got to take this off and everything uh, before we got ready to so I never did get it as good as I would like to have uh, gotten it. But now the, you see this molar is pretty well up in the uh, class one relationship. Now these bicuspids have got to get back underneath here. So still it's not really like I would like it. But I think we took him out before I got him where I wanted. So there's 93, and it's still got to close up a good bit in here. But these teeth look pretty flat now. So the roots must be coming along with the, with the crowns. All right, there it was in 91. That was 10 of 91, so it's not quite so, so bad. And here we are in 94. So it's a weight a lot better. And we've got a pretty good class one relation on here. And we've got these teeth angled. And these also. Now these teeth here were tending to be straight up and down. And the teeth here were straight too. But they were out in front, something like that. So we pulled it back and looked better but it's not really as good as you could do it and if he had done and by the way he's nearly 26 years old uh, we finished him up uh, here so and there is the well one of these teeth was pretty bad so it's all right take it out we're going to bring these two up well, they bring them up to here and bring this back about there, too. This one was good. We took it out. Bone structure's good. We'll bring all that forward. Now, he'll have these hanging over the back when you get through the upper with some teeth. All right, there it is in 91. There's 92. And you see we have actually this little bed here. But this wire will be going down like that in here so that we bring this forward and we need to bring these out too i don't think we got them exactly where i wanted them but there we're getting pretty close that's 92 and here's 93 and the, the this is pretty well class one now see and this is the wisdom tooth underneath the the second molar, this one hanging in the breeze, so you may have to eliminate that. Same thing over here, you probably have to take that out someday. Uh, you won't have room for that. This, These roots need to be further forward, and this is pretty good. This one needs to go back some. Both of those do. <coughs> Now that's 94 and we're going to close him out here. He's not really fully done, but we've got the six-year molar roots really out. We didn't get the bicuspid roots back where I wanted them exactly, but pretty good. And they'll probably migrate back some as he gets a little bit older, but he's, he's age 25 right here at this point. So he has some forward growth in this. And it's a lot better than it was. Uh, three to three we've got on these wearing up a retainer. Uh, now that was 94. I don't know what. Okay, here's the 93, the way the teeth were. And we'll go ahead and 
close this out now. And that's 12 of 93, so we've still got some space over here. We have closed up. And that's 93 is in a class 1 relation up in here. So, and class 1 over on this side. So here it is, 94. Now we've got, looks to me like we've got a little too much tip that direction. Should have these tip back more. We've got tip built in this one and a little bit in this one, but not much. So that doesn't look too hot there. And I think he more or less twisted our leg to get out of this before I really wanted to. But he didn't care about the particulars of it. But uh, anyway, we got it looking better than that. And we've got a little spot back in here that's not finished. So he kind of twisted my leg to get out of this thing. Now that's 10 of 94. And we put a 3 to 3 retainer. So here he is. It's not near as good as I would like. But uh, probably we got a little reduction in the vertical height. But that's the problem. You, you don't have a whole lot of control over that in this type of orthodontics you should have started but he for a man he doesn't look all that bad and he's got a pretty good smile there and that's that's not bad that's that's a bad picture there but uh, here he is a little later down the line and the teeth are looking good he didn't brush them but this was back when the pictures you sent them off and you just got what you got. But that looks pretty good there. And this is pretty good. Got that space is still there though, see. Uh, all right. So that covers this case. I, uh, maybe you've picked up something on this. I don't want people in our organization think that you cannot do class threes as general dentists. You can do them as good as anybody if you just learn how to do them. Now, I've worked with surgeons and they don't, they don't, because you're a general dentist, if you can do the work, they don't balk at all working with you. They're glad to work with you if you can do your part of the work. And they usually uh, take over the case and tell you exactly what they want done. And you do it, and they do the surgery. So you do a pre-surgical, and then you do the surgery, and then you do the post-surgical and finish them up. Do a little fine touches to it. So I don't hesitate teaching general and pediatric dentists how to do surgical orthodontics or any kind of it that you want to do if you know how to do it but it's best that you not jump on some of these cases when you only have a year or so of training even if you're pretty uh, sharp at doing it it's better to get a good bit of practice under your belt before you jump on uh, one of these cases, but don't be afraid of me. If you get to where you're good at it, I have lots of uh, young men that I've taught over the years that are doing some pretty doggone good orthodontics. I mean, the complicated stuff too. Now you really, when you first get in there, you send the other stuff out. For goodness sake, don't get buried up in it. So anyway, I'm on a hush and let you go ahead with this. So uh, we've got another case coming up here before long. So thank you for listening and, uh, and watching too. So we'll 
I'll let you later. Bye-bye.